Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore, and welcome to this week's edition of the Perry Report with Jerry Epstein, who now joins us from Amherst, Massachusetts. Jerry is the co-founder, co-director of the Political Economy Research Institute in Amherst. He also teaches economics there. Thanks for joining us, Jerry. Thank you, Paul. So what are you thinking about this week? Well, the State of the Union address is coming up tomorrow night, and uh, we're all thinking about what President Obama is going to do in the next four years. And uh, there's one positive thing I think he has been saying recently, which I've been uh, thinking about. The idea that uh, economic growth and development doesn't come from the top down, uh, from the, uh, the so-called uh, givers, uh, but it comes from the middle out and the bottom up. I think this is a, a good theme. This is something that uh, many of us have been arguing for for a long time now. Uh, and the question is, what can you do about it? Uh, and of course, he's uh, kind of boxed in uh, because of the uh, conservative Democrats and the control of the House by the Tea Party Republicans. But there's actually quite a bit he can do uh, globally. You know, there's a lot of criticism globally about the, the monetary policy of the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates so low. Now the Bank of Japan has been doing it, the U UK Bank, Central Bank in, Europe, in the United Kingdom. They're talking about currency wars. And this is something we've seen before. We've seen this in the 1920s and 1930s when in the Great Depression, uh, all these central banks uh, were lowering interest rates and there was competitive devaluations and uh, uh, it didn't lead to any global reflation. And John Maynard Keynes said, well, the answer to this is uh, global coordination of more expansionary fiscal policy, job creating government expenditure. Now, of course, uh, President Obama can't uh, uh, do this on his own, but what he can do is uh, really push the IMF, the World Bank, other global bodies to adopt a much more reflationary uh, fiscal policy, much more uh, policy to redistribute income to the, the middle class, the poor. And uh, he can do this without approval from Congress and the Senate. The way he can do this is by partly by his appointments, his appointments uh, at the IMF, his appointments at the World Bank, uh, what he tells his appointments, uh, the people that he appoints there to do, uh, to push. And I think this could make a very big difference on the global scene. But he would have to want to. Uh, is there any indication that he would want to? I mean, I take your point that he, he, he can, in a sense, he doesn't have the excuse that the House won't let him do it. Although you had, or you, one could go back to uh, when, he, when the Democrats did control the House, he, he still didn't do nearly what you, I think, thought he should have. But even now, where, where, is there any sense he would want to? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a, a good question. And this is a, a, a place to test. We know that with Geithner, Timothy Geithner, who's, uh, who's leaving, th thankfully, uh, didn't want to do this. Uh, he was the uh, banker's guy. And uh, his policy was just to try to keep the banks afloat and happy. And uh, now with him gone, um, Obama has, has a new chance, and uh, he has a new chance to show whether he's serious about this, even uh, in, in an arena where he actually has some, some clout. So there are appointments coming up at the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Um, he has appointments coming up in the Treasury Department who are going to set, help set IMF policy. The United States is the most powerful country uh, in the IMF. We know there has been some change at the uh, International Monetary Fund, the IMF. Uh, my colleague Eileen Grable has been writing about uh, productive incoherence and how uh, uh, with their right hand they're trying to loosen their strictures on capital controls. But as Mark Weisbrot at the Center for Economic Policy Research, Research has shown, with their conditionality policy, they're still imposing neoliberal policies. So there's a, a way in which at the IMF, for example, uh, if Obama wanted to, he could start really pushing this, this new policy that he claims that he wants, growing from the bottom up, from the middle out. And uh, pretty soon, with the appointments he makes and what they start doing there, we can see whether Obama uh, is serious or not. Now, could, uh, you're skeptical could he have done this? serious, and I, 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 I agree there's reason to be skeptical, uh, but let's push him and see. But couldn't he have done this over the last four years? Well, he could have done this, but um, I think he has changed some. He has seen... Uh, that the policies of the last four years that have been totally uh, focused in the financial realm, at least, on protecting the banks, didn't really pay off for him. I mean, look at what the banks did in the last election. They put all of their money, all of their clout, all of their uh, 
political muscle against him. And if I were him, I'd be pretty uh, pissed off. And I would see that that's a, that's a, a, a losing proposition. So let's see if he uh, changes his tune a bit in realms where he still has some power. Okay, so what's the next appointment that would be a litmus test of, uh, of this? The next uh, appointment would be an undersecretary in the Treasury Department who's in charge of, of uh, uh, international economic policy. And if he were to pick uh, a progressive economist uh, to, to do that, play that role, then um, that would be a good sign. And okay, well, well, we'll see when that happens and then we'll come back to you and find out. Uh, it seems to me that, he, as I said, he could have done this in the last four years. And, and I'm, I'm not sure if there's reason to think he, he isn't essentially just a neoliberal po uh, you know, politician and, and, and actually isn't in favor of these things. Yeah, no, I think there's, there's, there's a reasonable, there's a lot of evidence that what you're saying is true. Uh, but I think uh, those, those of us in the progressive area can really ho try to hold his feet to the fire now and push him uh, in these directions where he can't have excuses uh, about um, being blocked by Congress. Okay, well, we'll see. Thanks for joining us, Jerry. Thanks, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.